Yeah. Say so, say so, say so, say so. Say so, say so, say so. Yeah. Say so, say so, yeah. Say so, say so, say so. Say so, say so, say so. Say so, say so, say so. Yeah. Say so, say so. Properly introduce this brother and give a little background on this man because we are very, very honored to have this man here with us this evening. I don't understand. I want you guys to really understand, like, how much of a special guest this man is, okay? This man is not only a motivational speaker, he is a model, he is an actor, and also an author. His work has been featured across 74 countries. He has recently been on numerous radio stations. His, he's also been seen on uh, the CW talk show, and he has recently been on the Dr. Phil show. This man has written a book that has completely revolutionized the dating scene. Please, please give a warm welcome to the man who wrote What's Your Date Number, Mr. Andre Blaylock. Give it up. Hey, Andre, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. Where your mic? Oh, yeah. Stand, stand, I'm over there, I had a seat. We had to make him grab this mic, I'm so sorry. Test, test. <laughs> good, that was a good introduction. I wasn't gonna say none of that. No. Thank you. I was like, give it up. That was real good. No problem. No problem. Thanks, so, first of all, for having me. I'm really pleased to be here. I was listening to some of the things. God, this is a very opinionated audience, you know? And I was just listening basically with the love and in love thing. And, and through my travels, I noticed this. Love, whenever you put something, any word in front of the word love, you dilute it. Love is love. It's not love and I'm in love. It's more or less levels of being into you, okay? If I love you, I love you, but I might be more into you than I am you. And even if it's that at a certain moment, it can change, it can change. But I was just listening to just different things and it's just kind of like I wanted to bring that out because the brother that was in love, I guess, with two people, he was just more into his co-worker at that time, you know? And not necessarily that he loved her more than his wife or less than his wife. It's just like she provided something that turned him on. So I just wanted to kind of bring that out because it just kind of stuck in my ears. Right, you just wanted to clear that up. I just wanted I to kind of, it just kind of, just kind of just stuck in my ears. I'm wondering why you weren't talking about it. You wanted to say something. I wanted to say something, but I just wanted to sit down here. Yeah. I appreciate you speaking on that. So Andre, I want to just really get right into the meeting things. Okay. Um, I know everybody heard that your very well-known book is What's Your Date Number? Tell right. us a little bit about that. What that actually means. I found out that people don't date anymore. They mate. Okay? Mate, dating should be fun. It should be about enjoying the activity. It should be about enjoying getting to know the person. But what we do most of the time is we come into the equation with a checklist. Does he have this? Does she have that? Whatever. Those are mating questions. Those are not dating questions. If I meet you and I ask you um, out the gate, what do you do for a living? That's a mating question, because based upon what you say, mm, they might or may, may not meet my needs, right? Okay. So basically, it's just kind of like, I teach people, don't get into that. It should be about activities. If you go to a what's your date number function, we're gonna have a seminar, we're gonna talk, we're gonna have a good time, then we might do something like zip lining, or something like that, because it should be about the activity. Because I might not make a match romantically with someone, but if I get five people, we all go zip lining, I might make a friend for life. There you go. And that's when you start getting into people that you can really build relationships with. So the book basically came out, most of us will look at you on a scale of one to 10, let's just say I gave you like a nine. Okay, if I gave you like a, a nine, let's just say, <laughs> hypothetically, if I gave you a nine. <laughs> if I gave you nine. It's based upon external beauty. That's true. Okay? But, when I date you or start talking to you, I'm dating your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your sister. There's a whole bunch of people that come along with you based on how you were raised. That's your date number. So basically, I take the idea of external beauty and flip it inside out. And I ask the question, are you the type of person that you want to date? Okay? Look at yourself. You know what gets on your own nerves about yourself. What do you, are you doing about it? Do you say, well, dog, I know that I'm this way. I need to change. Or this is just me. Accept, take it or leave it. If you take that approach, no one has to take your job. That's right. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like going inside, asking yourself the hard question, am I the type of person I like today? If I have a problem with certain portions of my personality and I don't change them, 
and I meet someone else, even if they don't have a problem with those things, I'm going to create stress because I have a problem. I know I'm dirty. I know I don't keep a clean house. I need to clean the house. I meet somebody that might not do, you know, keep a clean house as well. They might not get on their nerves. But because I know if they do something dirty to them, like, why don't you just do it? It's going to create issues because I'm not changing it. So basically, that's what it is. So the book basically gets, makes you get real with yourself. It makes you get real with yourself because I basically took the idea of dating and broke it down into a simple system using 10 numbers. Each number represents personality trait. Number one is avoid me at all costs. Have you ever met a person that's so perpetually negative that nothing ever goes right in their life? Even if it is going right, they're gonna sabotage it. That's the number one. You should avoid them at all costs. Avoid they're them. absolute toxic and they will destroy you. Mm. Number three, let's just say is I spy. We all know people like, if you leave your phone somewhere, okay. somebody gonna go through your phone. They're going to look at your text messages. If you leave your computer up, there's something about them that makes them want to see what you got going on because they don't trust you. They can be beautiful on the outside, but they're number three on the inside because they're insecure. Then you have people like number four, like I call her Granny Clampett. You remember the, the Beverly Hill Billies, how she just rocked back and forth on top of that stuff? That's drama. Some people just pack drama, and they will not leave that drama alone. They're going to take that drama everywhere they go. Then we get to the higher numbers, like let's just say number nine is all that, and number 10 is and a bag of chips. Now, there are no number 10s. No. There are no and a bag of chips out there except for uh, LP. LP is Except for chips. LP. It's all but, number 10 really <laughs> is. Exactly. But you cannot assign yourself a number 10, but there are people out there brazen enough to do so. So basically, it's a conversation starter. I'm saying look at the different traits and personalities before you start dating a person because you can see certain red flags before you even get into it. Everyone has a dominant date number because we all change. You might be one way today and something else, but you have a dominant date number. And one of the things I want to say that a lot of women do, in the book I talk about load, which is level of acceptable desirability. A woman might meet a man who's not normally her cup of tea. He might be too short or whatever it is, and y'all have these kind of conversations with girls. Well, you know, I met Dre, but girl, before I tell you, he work here, he drive this. You got to set that man up because yeah. you know when she see me, I'm going to look like a little troll. Y'all know that you do that, yeah. right? Those are bonus points. Okay. okay. But the problem, I might be a six, but because of my job, because of whatever, you bump me up to an eight. Right. Okay? And it's those bonus points that you're going to present me to your friends on. Right. But have you ever seen a person? that was in a relationship like that, and they broke up, and then she immediately said, well, you want my type anyway with your funny looking stuff. I wouldn't even date you. You know, you can take away those bonus points at whim. Yeah. So you really shouldn't build relationships on those, but it just talks about a lot of stuff. I just kind of put together different scenarios and get people to looking at situations. Okay, let me ask you this. You have a blog called, yeah, I'm about to get into this. You have a blog called Confessions of a Gigolo. Yeah. Did that inspire this book? Um, did it give you any ideas for this book? And, and before I, before you answer that, I want to know, how did you come up with the name for the blog? <clears throat> All right, since we're being real. Let's be real. Say uh, so. Vincent True Love is, uh, he was me. When I got out of the military, okay. um, I found myself in a situation like that. And I was kind of brought in by, we called her mom. And mama kind of, you know, I was kind of back and forth and I was going through a parking lot and she just kind of pulled up and she was like, come here for a minute. This BMW, I mean, it's the biggest car. I'm like 18 years old. And she was wow. like, what are you doing for work? I'm like, nothing. You know, she was like, um, what have you been doing? I'm like, I just got the military. She's like, you want a job? I'm like, yeah, I need one. When does that happen? I know, right? And she was like, okay, well, be out there, be out, meet me at the post tomorrow and have a car come pick you up. Car came, took me to the biggest, mansion that I've ever seen, okay? And we look and I'm like, oh, she will give me a job. There's a lot of grass to cut. That's the only thing I'm thinking right, right now. I'm thinking right. like landscape. So she brought me, and then it was her and this dude with her. And they were just kind of sitting down, and she was like, come here. And I walked over there, walked away, and smiled and all this stuff. I'm like, this is a lot to do to cut grass. But once I passed, here's what she taught me. She was like, women know that they can get sex from a man who's interested in them, period, okay? Mm. 
It's the man that they want or the sex that they want that they can't get that they're willing to pay for. Oh. And either that's what? money, that's what time, that's what whatever. That dude that she wants that she cannot get, she's willing to invest in that joke because it's something about it different. And mama said, you're going to provide that elusive experience. So there were seven of us that lived in the house. And there were different models, different people. They said, mama said, some of these people you're going to notice on television, you're going to see them and stuff. You're going to date them, but you cannot sleep with them. The minute that you sleep with them, you lose your power. Whoever surrenders sex loses power. Wow. That's the power play. You have what a man wants. If it's the right man, he has what you want if you entertain him. Right. Men and women want the same thing. We just gotta go around it or about it differently, mm -hmm. you know? A woman to do a 30 second size up. Like when you met me, hypothetically, you can look me up and down, and that joke right there can get it if you play right. Mm -hmm. If he plays his cards right now, he can get it. You don't want to give it up too quickly because that's a relationship thing. That's like, if I give it up too quick, you don't think I'm going to Yeah. A dating decision is like, look, I'm going to own this. I'm attracted to him. He's attracted to me. He got what I want. I got what I want. If you do it, you can walk away from that situation and never feel used because you own the decision. Right. Only when you date and you ask those mating questions, what will he think of me tomorrow? That's a mating question. You know, so basically that's how the blog came up, Confessions of a Gigolo. I wanted to talk to women and save them from guys like me, okay? <laughs> There's someone who wrote a book, I'm not gonna say his name, and he talks about a 90 day rule. Wait 90 days, okay? That works for some people. Or with a brother like me, I can meet you at 12 o'clock, about four o'clock, and it's not a pat on my back meet you at 12 by 4 o'clock, you out those panties. Thing about it, because there's certain buttons that you can push, people can be programmed. Are you gonna give up those secrets? I call, I, I call that a first 48. You know what I'm saying? Uh, exactly. First 48. Exactly. And, if, and, if, and, 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 and you know, if you understand those buttons, you can get further with a woman in two days than a brother got in two months. Wow. If you know how to pay attention to a woman. If I was talking to you, I would find out, what do you like? What are your hobbies? You tell me, really? I mirror you, as you get excited, I get excited. As you lean forward, I lean forward. I ask you stuff that you're passionate about. As I ask you those questions, you light up, and you, I'm like, really? Every time that you say something, you're excited. Are you with touch? Every time I do that, every time I get in trouble, every time I do that, it's associating now good feelings mm -hmm. with my touch. Mm -hmm. So then so that's the game. Y'all better take notes. Yeah. That makes sense, folks. Right. You know, better take and, notes. And, and, that, try to let it and that, that's called anchoring. <laughs> but basically what I wanted to do is I just wanted to kind of give back because when I look at the landscape, one of the things that the ladies were saying, that's true but unfair. Women right now outnumber us about 15 to 1. Guys do not have to play by the same rules that we used to because y'all outnumber us. And if you don't do it, there's probably 14 other people that might. And out of the 14 that might, it definitely three probably will. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So we don't have to go through all that anymore. But one of the things that I kind of tell women that I try to talk to them, like, own your decisions. There you go. Own it. That's right. So that way you can never feel played. Don't feel regret. Don't feel regret. You own it. Make that joke a date you. So anyway, that's what the blog is about. And I just want to say one post that set it all for me. It's called, um, he's happy with his STD. What? The man is very happy with his STD. The woman called Vincent. And she said, Vincent, I'm having a hard time getting this man to take this relationship to the next level. I really like him. I don't know what it is. I'm attractive. I'm all this stuff. What's up? Vincent said, well, do you see other people? Yeah, we see other people, but I don't have the same type of attraction that I do with him. Oh, that's easy. You're an acute STD while SOS. But she wanted to slap him. I do not have a sexually transmitted disease. I practice safe sex. Well, I'm glad that you practice safe sex, but STD SOS is an acronym standing for something to do while stuck on a stoop. Whoa. Most women are nothing more than playing a card game, frisbee, or dominoes to that dude. 
okay? Each, you're just something to do. You get stuck on stupid because you start getting emotionally attached to the activities and that dude, because most men work their saw, no, whoever gets the time gets the girl. If me and LP are trying to compete for you, whichever one of us gets most of your time is going to get you. So we're just going to kind of monopolize your time with stuff like this. And you get stuck on stupid because of that. And it doesn't work out well for you. And that's why I'm like, just own it. And once women start grabbing that, there are different things like don't build a bear and PMS, because men have PMS too, power, wow. money, and sex. You know, that's what we're attracted to. The blog just took on a life of its own, and it surprised me when it went to 74 different countries. And, wow. and this is just where I am now. Yeah, it definitely uh, touches on a lot of different topics. So, as a writer, I want to ask you this, because this book has definitely changed the game mm. for the dating scene, yeah. okay? As a writer, did you always know that you were a writer? Were you always a good writer? And was this like the very first work that you ever did? No, I, I really had a taste of it in like the third or fourth grade when I, when I wrote See, I kind of felt that. It was an ass and knees. And my mom, bless her heart, she never really, because she had to work so hard, she didn't really understand. I'm not gonna say she didn't understand it, but she didn't really push me. But after that was written, like Channel 4 wanted to kind of do something with me, because like, this is, this is good. You know, this is actually good. But mom didn't really press it. So I'm naturally an introvert. I go inward and I just kind of observe a lot of things. And then I ask myself different questions. It's like this, but why? You know, and so and then I just kind of expressed that in writing um, because it, it took me for a long time. Uh, it was a hard time when I first met LP years and years and years ago. I really didn't talk that much. LP has always really been outspoken and, and stuff. Yeah, like he this. talked too much. You know, he's always been that guy. I've always been the opposite of that guy. But I move in silence, you know. And I watch out for people like me. Oh, uh, well, something like that. <laughs> but it's kind of like I've always um, had the ability to write and inspire. And the things that always found me, I've always found myself doing things in front of people because that was my biggest fear. I don't like being fearful of anything. I believe that if you're scared, it's because you're ignorant. You don't know why. You've never asked yourself a question, why am I afraid of this? So if I'm scared of people, quite naturally, I'm going to join Toastmasters or get in front of people like in acting or modeling because it's going to put me in front of a lot of people because I'm terrified to do it. But there's no reason to be terrified to do it. And once you face your fear, you get over it. You realize there's really nothing to be afraid of. So it just kind of transitioned. And my thing is I have a mission now. My mission statement is I really want to put fun back into dating. I really hate watching a lot of these mis- match arithmetic equations, and I talk about that in the book. Okay. If you're a three and you're dating a seven, that's a clear cut case of mismatch arithmetic. And if you're really not gonna do the hard work of really saying, why am I like this? Do I really want to change? You're gonna keep finding yourself in this dog like cycle, and you find yourself dating the same joker that look differently. The same <laughs> kind of man, that's but true. he just that's looks true. differently. That's true. That's a you thing. That's a me thing. And I really want to get the focus back on the dating because we don't date anymore, we make. That's true. That's true. People hook up, get together, and have babies, and now mm -hmm. this is it. Exactly. We together. Is that we together? <laughs> right. Exactly. Let me ask you this, Andre. Is, is there anything that you would just refuse to write about? Or would you talk about anything? I think I'll talk about anything because when it looks at love, it could be a taboo. So, um, topic, I was in Florida the other day, and I was, the last the other week, and I was asked by um, different crowd members, like gay and lesbian crowd, okay. would you not talk about that? My thing is love, is love. If you're 12 years old and you have a crush on that boy or girl that breaks your heart, you still feel that emotional pain. Mm -hmm. Just like if you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s. So for me, writing about it is nothing taboo because basically I'm gonna ask you the hard questions. You don't like it, what are you gonna do about it? Because you have to be the instrument of change that you want to see occur. And especially in this whole dating arena because you have too many divorces, you have people now, the, the, the domestic violence. Yes. Um, you have all this stuff going on right now. That's because people are not asking themselves the hard question. Why am I like this? I say in the book, we're all children who live in a mansion. 
The mansion is our grown bodies. Whenever you observe a child that is not getting his way, he throws a temper tantrum, right? You might want to spank his butt if you believe in that, but when you get older, you're not supposed to spank booty. Now, sometimes they will, that's domestic violence, but that man who gets angry that does not get his way will punch a hole in the wall. That's a temper tantrum. That's right. That woman who does not get her way might cry, might manipulate. That's a temper tantrum. And you can either enable that or not enable it. But we get into stuff like that in the book. It's a very short read, 68 pages, but it's power packed with information that I really believe will Definitely help you out. Definitely sounds like it. Absolutely. Definitely sounds like it. Now, Andre, we're going to get on with this topic that we want to ask you this evening and also for our audience here tonight. Um, this day and age, um, what is your opinion on this topic? This day and age, why do you think a lot of relationships don't last? We have a microwave um, mentality. Finding someone to love is not hard. We kind of think, God, I'm just so single. If I just find somebody to date, if you put yourself in the right situation, you can go to the mall and find somebody to date. I mean, you can go anywhere and find someone to date, okay? It's not the meeting someone, dating them. It's putting the work in mm -hmm. to make the thing last. Finding someone is easy. It takes work to make any relationship last, and I don't believe that we want to do the work. Mm. I really believe lazy. that it's like, we're just lazy. You know, it's like we have, a lot of, we have a lot of options. Like one of the things I was telling um, a brother, because some, I was talking to a group of very professional women in Florida, and th there are not a lot of men out here today. I'm like, yeah, there are. Even though you outnumber us, there are plenty of men today, but what are these prerequisites? If you if you if your man has to be six feet tall, you're gonna you going to avoid the brothers that are five, six, five, seven, five, eight, that are good men That's right. that can provide things for you because they don't meet this height requirement. It's not that there are a shortage of men out there, but you're not willing to put the work in to change yourself, be like, you know what? This is foolish. Yeah, we'll give this I said when I was 20 or 30 years old, I ain't gonna date a short man now. 40 years old, I'm still by myself. I might need to remix that. I might need That's to right. look at it and switch it up. You know? So I really think that um, relationships aren't lasting these days because we don't want to put the work in. We don't have to. There's, it's like a merry-go-round. There's so many people jumping in and jumping off. You know, you might be with somebody this week. Let me just wait. She ain't going to be on. Let's just see what it looks like in a month. You might be available next month. And people say month. that. Yeah, they, they're just, they're just a watch. And they're That's like, right. oh, well, we'll see who, what happens in two exactly. months. I give them 60 days. It's exactly. We do that. And it works. And it works because it's like we're not really willing to put the work in or the time in. Okay. We're going to open the floor for the audience. And if you don't mind, they might Absolutely. ask me some questions Absolutely. as well. But I'd like to ask the audience as well what their opinion is, you know, on this topic. Um. So... Does your book help a person identify which number they are? What the book does is, is ask you to read the scenarios. It asks you to read the different profiles and find yourself there. I was very careful not to try to assign a number to anyone because it's about self-discovery. That's the reason of the book, what's your date number? If you read it and you know that you're going to have a hard time, that you're going to pick up your man's phone if he lays it down, or if you're gonna do these things, that's you. You know, you might see certain parts in every number or a lot of numbers, but you're gonna find out your, pre, your dominant date number. And then I'm challenging you, what are you gonna do about that? So it's not really about me trying to find a number or assign a number for you, it's about you discovering that yourself and doing something about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? But once you figure out what your date number is, do your book give you a guide as to say what you should be doing? Should you be talking to somebody at your equal? If you're somebody who's sneaky, should you be looking for somebody who's sneaky? Mm -hmm. How does it help you to maneuver to not be single then? What it does is I paint different scenarios using different numbers as examples. What might happen if a number two dates a number six? What might happen if a three dates a nine? Stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily give clear cut advice because again, I don't really want to get into, it's called what's your date number. My thing is I want us to go inside, see different scenarios of people. It's kind of like we're observing these 
uh, relationships from the outside. And then, okay, this applies to me, this is my number, this is a scenario that I, maybe I know people like this, how can I change to become a better person, become the type of person that's dateable? The next book is gonna be what, what's your mate number? Because once we get this dating thing together, we're gonna put an M in front of that eight, and we're gonna start building lasting relationships because we're gonna fix the broken pieces in ourselves through the dating process. Anybody else? Even if you just have an opinion about, you know, why relationships may not last today, you can speak on that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. You don't just have to ask a question. I'm gonna need y'all to say something. Everybody, they, they don't talk about that early. Even Robert didn't quite. I, I, okay, I'll say something. Say, Look, there you go. He got something to say. Look, he's alive, he's alive. <laughs> watch, him, watch him hold his mic. Try, try to get somebody else on. What we thinking of trying to take over? Do all Check this out, right? I ain't gonna check this out. You <laughs> better rap, right? I did that on purpose. I'm trying to bias right now. I have so much information because I, um, I interviewed Mr. Blake like a little earlier today. So, I'm, um, yeah, so I have a whole lot of stuff I can say right now that he probably wouldn't want me to. But what I will say, man, my personal opinion why I think relationships don't last is because people are not friends. I think we don't take the time to. Um, enjoy each other in the sense of learning a person as you would do like your best friend. Because a lot of us have a person in our lives that we consider our best friend, it doesn't matter what we go through, they'll always be in our lives. With relationships, I think people go into it expecting it to fail. And when you go into it expecting it to fail based on what happens, you don't bring enough of yourself in it, and you leave certain things out and allow other things to creep in that doesn't cause it to actually stick. So your relationship is built on sand because you're already walking to it with fear. And then as we all know, fear is not from the Spirit of God. So if you're going into a situation believing that, and you're going into it with fear, it's not going to work. Hello, right? Yeah. Brothers deep in I know, right? They got something to say. This is a question on your opinion. Um, I noticed that, uh, well, from what I think is that relationships depend on uh, the age you were raised in. Uh, back, I don't know, 50 years ago, we have, from what I see, more people who are married and grew, grew old together than we do nowadays. Um, do you think the internet is a, is a big part of that, or, or, or has it been the same forever? Nothing has changed, regardless. I really think that back in the day, you had people who encouraged you to stay together. You realize that, no, you're not gonna find perfection. Um, we're all, we all have issues, but you stick it out, you work together. You work together. And when you have a community like that, that's willing to encourage you, and not, if you're gonna talk about your husband, well, hey, don't you talk about John like that. Now, John doesn't even remember John's. They're gonna bring the positive back. They're gonna force you to think about the positive. What happens these days is we get with people that will reinforce the negative. I wouldn't put up with that. If I was you, I would do something. No, if you were me, you'd be doing exactly what I'm doing, because you would be me. You know what I mean? Yes, so you wouldn't be doing nothing. You'd be doing exactly what I'm doing. You'd be just as confused with that big Harvey's hat on your head, just like me, right? So basically, I really think that today is about television shows. It's about how people just trade in people like they're garbage. You know, it's like, we're not irreplaceable like that. You know, if I'm mad at you, show me. You know, but we don't get that these days. And sometimes you can jump into that too quickly. But back in the day, just everything has changed. They took their time back then. Especially us, people of color, we courted back then. They called it courting, you know. And it took time to court. I walked 10 miles just to sit on the porch right. to talk right. to Bessie. <laughs> And we just gonna hold hands because you know mom and dad ain't gonna let nothing else go. But I put that time in. That's right. You know what I mean? And it meant something. I ain't gonna wear out my good shoes because you know they got dressed up back then to walk 10 miles if I don't like you and I'm not building something. These days we come out looking any old way, mm -hmm. doing any old thing. If you don't like me, forget you, I'll replace you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So the value has been taken away. And I think the more that we promote some of that stuff on television, and I, I, I've I got to be careful because I'm on television. I do stuff. But I know that there's an agenda. I'll just put it like that. There's an agenda behind everything that you're watching. 
And it does not, most of the time, have your best interest at heart. That's right. Yeah, I was going to say that too. I think it's uh, a lot of subjectiveness on TV. But what I was going to say too on top of that is that when it comes to the way men and women view each other, I think it has to do something with settling. I think a lot of people back in the day, our older people, they stayed together for a long time, but they wasn't necessarily happy. A lot of them settled for the situation they were in. And I think a lot of us took that mentality too, growing up into our own situations. Because most of us here probably can attest that we have multiple serious situations that we consider ourselves being in. And I think that all goes into some of us settling. Like, if your date number book would have came out when I was in high school, oh, well, yeah, I'd be crazy right now, you know what I'm saying? If I didn't know myself and the way I could place a number. So when I look at life and I looked at my grandparents and stuff, I noticed that they were together, but they wasn't necessarily happy. And I don't know if that's a good representation of what we should go after in relationships. And I think a lot of people in church are like that too. That's the biggest turn off when it comes to relationships being church wise is because of that. But I ain't gonna go on because I see yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, I see a lot of people out there. Talking about the Well, it looks good on Facebook. Yeah, and, and the main thing like that just caught my ear when he was saying, you know, you have these friends and these people that are always telling you you're looking for someone to confide in and say, hey, you know. I'm stressed out, my man is tripping, you know, I don't understand why he did this or did that. And you're hoping your girlfriend would say to you, you know, hey, you know, but that man does this, this, and that for you. You know, he ain't that bad. You know, give him the benefit of the doubt. But no, instead, you know, uh, whatever her name is, you know, Ronquisha, whoever, <laughs> she's gonna say, you know, girl, I would, that wouldn't be me, you a good one. Mm -hmm. that, that's like, like, like the famous line, you're like, you a good one for right. that, right? And it just breaks a woman down and it makes her feel like, well, am I tolerating too much? You know, am I doing too much? And it may not be such a big deal, but like he said, we're not willing to work anymore or try to put in that time to figure it out and see if we can, you know, put those pieces of the puzzle back together. You know, and of course you're gonna listen to your friends sometimes, but sometimes you don't need to listen to them. You know, those are called what he described, what we call today, haters. Exactly, exactly. And one more thing I wanna say most, because you brought something up. Um, if I was to ask you, what's the definition of a dog? This dude is a dog, what's, how would you describe that? Mm, a dog. Lamont is a dog, how would you describe it? <laughs> now, I ain't gonna do my buddy like that. He's a good man. I'm trying to advertise him. I'm trying to get him a boo. He's trying to help him. He's trying to help him get on. He's a good man. Okay. But a dog, I would say, um, he lies. He cheats. He's not loyal. Um, he steals from his woman. You know, um, he doesn't pay attention to her. He doesn't come home. He don't take care of his kids. Look, I can go on forever, okay? okay. okay. <laughs> now, just by a show of hands, just for me, how many of you ladies would agree with that definition, historically? That that's the definition of dog. Okay? You get ready to get Blaylock. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Get him. Uh-oh. Get him. When you think of a dog, what are the characteristics of a dog? Loyal. Loyalty. Loyal. Trust. Faithful. Faithful. Trustworthy. Best friend. Man's best friend. <laughs> The right dog will lay down his life to protect you. The right dog will lay down his life to protect you. Okay? If you got that at home, you are blessed. Now, let's look at a puppy. What does a puppy do? A puppy is undisciplined. That's right. No self control. That's right. Won't stay in his own yard. Mm -hmm. Gonna mess up the whole house, boo boo, whatever, gonna chase the cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just undisciplined. Okay, that's a puppy. That's a puppy. I challenge you that most of you women have not been in relationship with dogs. You've been dating puppies. There you go. So it's like if you hey, broke it down. dog at home, go home and pat your dog. Amen. <laughs> but if you got a puppy at home, go train your puppy. Go train your puppy. Exactly. So puppies can be trained into exactly. good dogs. You just been play that. But let's, let me tell you this. I have a female dog. Oh. She's a pig. No, I mean, I really haven't. Uh, let's not get to that. In close, I know, I know we're running short of time. 
Rick will take us out of hand. Okay, I'm sorry. So in, in closing, I want you to give everybody your, your information, how they can stay in contact with you. Yes. Of course, you know, purchase, how much is your book? The book is $10. Purchase um, a book, guys. The book is $10. I really, if it's not for you, for somebody that you know, because basically I think that this is something, it's beyond me, it's bigger than me. It's just one of those type of things, it's just information I just think needs to be out there. We just need to start the conversation. Why is this not working? Let's reassess this thing. You can look me up at www.andreblaylock.com. From there you can see where I'm going to be, where I'm going to be speaking. Um, you can buy the book there. There are different links all over the place. And it's just an interactive site. So that's basically how you can get in contact with me. All right, y'all heard the man. Y'all check him out and make sure that you get his book over here to write.